um, of this anthology. It's the first anthology of American poets um, who draw on their roots from South Asia. So we have um, poets whose ancestry goes back to Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka. Um, but primarily, you know, we have 49 poets here. Some of the best uh, voices that are, that are out there really who are part of, um, we're just publishing a lot, and yet we wanted to bring them together into one place to showcase them, to kind of show that, the, the, that you know, South Asian American poetry has really come of age in the last few decades. Gat Song. As an oar cuts the river, listen for the chandelier crushed by a galloping horse. A child stands under the shelter of a windowsill, peeling back the golden foil, sheathing a stolen chocolate. The sound of shh from the rustling of skin on skin of starved lovers who pause for a breath when they hear the tinkling of keys, ice in a cool grape drink, a beetle crossing slate. A child hits the shrillest key on a toy piano again and again, but fails to awaken his father, who snores with a broken neck. The clink of an earring against a bone and the scraping of a beard against a nipple. All the while, a child buries a tailless lizard beside the well, dry of water, but not wishes. You can hear a seedling breaking through cement, rising up from pillows of golden moss. If you listen, it is two dogs playing with a hat. It is Anna's tea filling clay. It is a pencil tip catching the fiber of paper. It is a child covering a plastic egg with soil, rejoining tail with body, a holy operation. It is the tail twitching. When I was a child, there was this lady who cooked in our house. The name was Viso. And for a long time, I thought she was part of our family, like my someone related to my mother. Because as in, like any kids do, I got slapped around by her. <laughs> I was stealing food while she was cooking. So years later, I, I thought about this woman and I, I was trying to figure out why she spent an entire lifetime in someone else's house cooking. And I imagine her as a bad karma girl. This poem is about her. A monsoon night, the moon curls into the seventh house. You are yanked like a weed, wet and cold. A howl fills you with dark water. You burst, holler a lung full of hurt. They said that there is no cure for bad luck. They said it is the will of the planets. They had the time of your birth inked on a dead scroll like a life sentence. You walk on shadows two steps behind the rest. You bathe in the moonlight, humming lullabies to the lilies. You unleash the cumin, color onions with saffron, cajole the brinjal to fornicate with the tamarind. Talk of your wicked fry splatters across the bazaar like mustard seed on broiled oil. Behind the kitchen curtain, unseen like the suit, you become a legend of no one. Thank you very much.
they caught us once between the cypress trees, a block from our apartment complex, where the hallways always smelled of beer and boiled rice. Though I don't remember exactly, just two boys on bikes, the flash of sunlight on steel handlebars, words sharp, and the bite of mosquitoes that burned our ankles. Something hard hit my brother in the head. A red bindi in the center of the forehead like a rose, like the ones I saw my mother wear, but his bled down his face. A dot head, a sand nigger, one of them who never freckled during recess, smelled of curry and spices, ate their sandwiches rolled up in brown bread, skin dark as almonds. Except they got it wrong. No matter how many times they rode by, chasing us with words, with rocks and broken bottles, spitting at our backs, they got it wrong. It was a sign of being blessed after temple, of celebration when women wore them, red gold to match silver threaded saris, to match red and green glass bangles that shivered up their forearms. My brother's jagged, glittering more than a pundit's thumbprint, more than a holy mark, glittering. And it's basically about my, it's basically about my love for the French symbolist poet Guillaume Apollinaire. You speak of the heavenly bee, Arctur, resting fat in bed with gauze above your brows that covers the contingent wound from the war. You receive the shell that split your head while reading. Before meeting you, I was young with my father on a country ranch. On a swing, they were burning the pig for lunch. Heard horny, rusted snorts cornered across the field. The spit turned above the cedar fire when he pointed, not at my falling shin, but the bee I swung into, who killed himself and clung still in my shin. Later, the pig died roasting. It was heavenly, like you are when red. But you're the stick in the color. Today I'd like to, I'd really like to thank Machine Project for giving us this, which is our LA launch, and um, it's our